Hi, welcome to part two of my introduction to Avaya Breeze. My name is Andrew Prokop, and today I'm going to expand on the snap in I created in part one and find a few ways to make it a little more flexible. Specifically, I'm going to talk about snap in properties and attributes. The snap in I built in part one was pretty straightforward. It made a call, played an announcement, and then dropped the call. Think robocall. However, it would be a very limited robocall since we hard coded the call at number and the announcement into the snap in. It would only be effective if you wanted to call the same person over and over again saying the exact same thing. Thankfully, Avaya provides a number of ways to customize real time instances of snap ins. Today I'm going to address one important way. As you will eventually see, it may not be the best way to address this particular snap in, but the concepts apply to more complicated solutions. Let's begin by taking another look at the make call snap in. It begins at the start task before advancing to make call, play announcement, drop call, and ultimately the end event. If I open up make call, you will see the hard coded value for call at party that I set in part one. Properties are like variables, except they aren't set at runtime within a snap in. A property lives outside the snap in and is populated before a snap in is invoked. As with tasks, a right mouse click or a double click will open up properties. I haven't added any properties to the snap in, so it comes up empty. But let's click on Add a New Property and create something called Call Ed Party. It needs a value, so let's set what we had in the Make Call task 2304. While I am here, I will create a property for the announcement played when the call is answered. Let's call it greeting and set the value to hi from breeze. This is the sound of a property. So let's call it greeting. Hi from breeze. This is the sound of a property. I will now save these values and return to make call. So let me open up make call. Let's delete the value for call at party. Now let's open up input mapping. Notice that properties now show up on the left side and there are the two properties I just added. So let me copy over call it party from the properties to the call it party used by this particular task. Let me click save. Notice how the make call properties show that call it party now comes from properties. It also maps call it party to caller ID. Honestly, I have no idea why this happens. Let me close this out. Let's do something similar for play announcement. So I'm going to delete media URI text. I'm going to go over to input mapping. I'm going to go back to properties. I'm going to find the greeting that we just created. Now I'm going to map this over. I will save this. Now notice also, as with make call, that properties.greeting is what is mapped into the properties of play announcements. So it realizes that the, the input is coming from somewhere else. Okay, allow me to go to System Manager and then under Engagement Development Platform, I'm going to open up Configuration and under Configuration, I will open up attributes. Attributes are where snap and properties are stored and manipulated. There are many ways to view and manipulate attributes, but for simplicity I will choose one. By clicking Service Globals, I can work with attributes and properties for a snap in at a global level. Scrolling down, I will eventually come to Make Call Demo 1. I'll open that up. And what do I see? Why I see the properties that we just created. For fun, let me change the greeting to something different. So I'll go open up greeting. 
And now instead of this is the sound of a property, this is the sound of an attribute. Let's commit that. Let's return back to cluster administration. Let's open up admin console. We'll select make call demo. We'll create an instance. As with the um, part one, we're going to ignore this for now. I have my incoming call. Let me answer it. Hi from Bree. This is the sound of an attribute. Now, did you hear that? Even though I had hard coded the greeting to say this is the sound of a property within the engagement designer, I manipulated it outside of the snap in. I hope you are starting to understand the power of properties. Although this snap in is still quite trivial, the idea of manipulating runtime data outside the engagement designer is a very powerful concept. Imagine the kinds of data that you can make accessible to an administrator URLs, login IDs, timeouts, etc., etc., etc. Still, properties and attributes are fairly static in nature and it would be cumbersome to change them often. That's where snap ins integrated with databases come in, but that's a topic for another day. I hope you found this helpful. In future videos, I will discuss additional enhancements that can be made to the make call snap in before branching off into snap ins that intercept incoming calls and those that integrate additional forms of communications into a workflow. With that, I will close out part two. Please subscribe to the Aero Systems Integration YouTube channel for additional videos in this series. Thanks again for tuning in, and bye for now.